The New Chemical Light, attributed to the alchemist Michael Sendergogius. The first treatise of nature, what she is, and what manner of men her disciples ought to be. Many sages, scholars, and learned men have in all ages, and according to Hermes, even so early as the days before the flood, written much concerning the preparation of the philosopher's stone, and if their books could be understood without a knowledge of the living processes of nature, one might almost say that they are calculated to supersede the study of the real world around us. But though they never departed from the simple ways of nature, they have something to teach us, which in these more sophisticated times still need to learn, because we have applied ourselves to what are regarded as the more advanced branches of knowledge, and despise the study of so simple a thing as natural generation. Hence we pay more heed to impossible things than to those objects which are broadly exhibited before our very eyes. We excel more in subtle speculations than in a sober study of nature and of the meaning of the sages. It is one of the most remarkable features of human nature that we neglect those things which seem familiar and are eager for new and strange information. The workman who has attained the highest degree of excellence in his art neglects it and applies himself to something else, or else abuses his knowledge. Our longing for an increase of knowledge urges us ever onward towards some final goal in which we imagine that we shall find full rest and satisfaction, like the ant, which is not endowed with wings till the last days of its life. In our time, the philosophical art has become a very subtle matter. It is the craft of the goldsmith compared with that of the humble workman who exercises his calling at the forge. We have made much such mighty strides in advance that if the ancient masters of our science hermes and geber and raymond lolius were to rise from the dead they would be treated by our modern alchemists not as sages but as only humble learners they would seem very poor scholars in our modern lore of futile distillations circulations calcinations and in all other countless operations wherewith modern research has so famously enriched our art, though without understanding the sense of the ancient writings. In all these respects, our learning vastly superior to theirs. Only one thing is unfortunately wanting to us which they possessed, namely the knack they had of actually preparing the philosopher's stone perhaps then their simple methods were after all the best and it is on this supposition that i desire in this volume to teach you to understand nature so that our vain imaginations may not misdirect us in the true and simple way nature then is one true, simple, self-contained, created by God and informed with a certain universal spirit. Its end and origin are God. Its unity is also found in God. Because God made all things, nature is the one source of all things, nor is anything in the world outside of nature, or contrary to nature. Nature is divided into four places in which she brings forth all things that appear and that are in the shade. And according to the good or bad quality of the place, she brings forth good or bad things. There are only four qualities which are in all things, and yet do not agree among themselves, as one is always striving to obtain the mastery over the rest. Nature is not visible, 
though she acts visibly, she is a volatile spirit who manifests herself in material shapes, and her existence is in the will of God. Students of nature should be such as is nature herself, true, simple, patient, constant, and so on. Above all, they should fear God and love their neighbors. They should always be ready to learn from nature and to be guided by her methods, ascertaining by visible and sensible examples whether that which they propose to perform is in accordance with her possibilities. If we would reproduce something already accomplished by nature, we follow her, but if we would improve on her performance, we must know in and by what it is ameliorated. For instance, if we desire to impart to a metal greater excellence than nature has given to it, we must take the metallic substance both in its male and its female varieties, else all our efforts will be in vain. It is as impossible to produce a metal out of a plant. It is most important for us to know her places and those which are most in harmony and most closely allied in order that we may join things together according to nature and not attempt to confound vegetables with animals or animals with metals. Everything should be made to act on that which is like to it, and then nature will perform her duty as to make a tree out of a dog or any other animal. That is the conclusion of today's audiobook on The New Chemical Light by Michael Sendebogius. Be sure to subscribe so that you can be notified when we upload the reading of the second treatise concerning the operation of nature in our substance and its seed. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.